Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel, and today we're going to be talking about specifically what it means to have your Mars in Scorpio or Mars in the 8th house. My name is Brandon, I do astrology videos here on YouTube, and this is much part of a much larger series that I'm working on, where I go through every single planet in every single sign and house. So I have a playlist down below, you're welcome to check out, where I go through Mars in every single sign, every single house, as well as every single other planet as well. So if you have anything in anything prior to Scorpio or the 8th house, um, there's going to be a video down there for you. So um, with that as well, I'm going to be talking about in this video a couple of different things. One of which is what Mars means in astrology in general. Um, second to that, we're going to talk about, obviously, Mars and Scorpio. And then, finally, Mars in the 8th house. So if you have your Mars in Scorpio, not your Mars in the 8th house, um, check out that that section down below and vice versa, um, just to kind of really help you understand um, really how Mars works um, specifically to your chart. Um, so this video is going to kind of be broken down in a bunch of different portions, timestamps down below for that. And of course, if you are interested in anything with me, feel free to check down there below as well. Um, I do have some offerings, some availability, things of that nature. Um, I do also have down below if you're interested in learning more about your chart. Um, there's other links down there too. Um, and then also, of course, if you need to know what your chart is, if you're like, what is this? I don't know what's going on. There's a link down there to generate your chart to kind of get some more information. So without further ado, let's go in and talk a little bit more about what Mars means than astrology. Okay, so Mars in astrology. Mars is a pretty heavy planet. It's heavy, but it's intense. It's fiery. It's, it's, it's ignition. It's passion, um, and it's what drives us. It's what gets us up in the morning to fight and keep going. And Mars really has a lot of power in the chart. Um, Mars is once once more connected to our personal power and what we, once again, can accomplish. Uh, and so when we see anything related to fighting, anything related to anger, anything related to libido, anything related to just drive and energy um, and heat, anything that's that's inflammatory in nature is typically Martian. Anything that's, that's sharp or severing. Mars is a very... Um, sharp um, sort of planet. It's very angry. It's very feisty. It looks like this. This is the glyph here. Um, and it is a, typically this is the sign for like what we consider to be male. So there is some male dichotomy in regards to Mars as well. So there's that male, female kind of cat and mouse game. Um, so if we think about Mars um, in the more forward sense, Mars is going to be um, more of the cat in this cat and mouse. It's going to be more of the pursuant. It's going to be more of the um, the aggressor, you know, or the one that is kind of going after things um, and kind of pursuing whatever it is that they want, right? That's what Mars is. And that's also why it's important to understand what Venus is doing in the chart too, because um, Venus is what you want. Mars is how you get it. Um, in the same vein with Venus, if you know your Venus placement, you need to know your Mars placement for that exact same reason. Um, and so your Mars placement by house and by sign are going to have a lot of importance as well, because it's going to show you how you fight for what you want, how you get your energy in the morning, how you go after things in your life. And Mars really wants you to be driven towards whatever sign and house that specific Mars is placed in, as well as the aspects are going to flavor, like how you go after your goals, how you fight for things, um, what you want to fight for, what you what you deem worth fighting for, um, as well as just your energy levels and how they kind of fluctuate, right? And so Mars does have some dignity. Um, every planet has dignity. Mars um, rules Aries and it rules Scorpio. Um, so that's one of the videos we're going to be talking about today. Obviously, this is Mars Scorpio video. Um, and then um, it's considered to be exalted in the sign of Capricorn. Um, so whenever we put anything opposite of the signs that it's um, dignified in, so or exalted in, it's going to be not as comfortable in those signs, right? So um, the opposite of regular just domicile or at home, which would be Mars and Aries or Mars and Scorpio, is going to be detriment um, or exiled, which is the opposite of that. So this would be Mars in Libra or Mars in Taurus. Um, those are both going to be Mars placements that are not going to be super comfortable because this is Mars in a Venus world sign. Um, and then with exaltation, Mars is exalted in Capricorn and it's considered to be fallen. Um, and the opposite of that, which is opposite of Capricorn, in the sign of Cancer. So Mars and Cancer is a whole different story. I've done a video on Mars and Cancer, um, as well as Taurus and Libra. You're welcome to check those out, as well as Aries. So, um, but this is another one of Mars um, Dignity videos. So there's a lot that we can talk about here. And then, of course, for those that don't know, this is actually my own Mars placement. So I have a lot of context to bring to this particular video. 
Um, I know I yapped quite a lot for the Sun and Scorpio video, as that's my sun sign. So if you have your Mars in Scorpio, you there's a lot of stuff I'm going to be telling you specifically t related to how it's perceived to me and how I've lived it. Um, and there's a lot of different lessons around Mars in Scorpio for sure. Um, so yeah, so without further ado, let's actually dive right in to what Mars means in Scorpio. Okay, so Mars in Scorpio. Uh, so this is my own personal placement, so I have quite a lot to say specifically about how Mars functions within Scorpio. Um, Mars obviously is ruling Scorpio, so it is um, at home here, so it's comfortable. So it is considered to be in dignity, it's considered to be domicile, it's considered to just be in its home environment, it knows what it's doing, it knows what it's working with, it knows how to use its resources. And I've said this kind of throughout this series here, for those of you that may have watched other dignified videos or at home placements, um, similar to this one. So like Mars and Aries, Venus and Taurus, Mercury and Gemini, Mercury and Virgo, right? Venus and Libra, um, Sun and Leo, all those things are going to kind of have their own sort of strength to them because they're at home. Now, the thing is about a planet at home, some people think, and I've said this in every domicile video that I've done, but people feel like because it's dignified, because it's, you know, at home, it's good. You don't have to worry about it. It's fine, right? It's great. You know how to, in regards to Mars, like, you know how to do things. You know how to fight for stuff. You know how to get things done, right? When in actuality, what I've found is when a planet is in dignity, when it's in its own sign, yes, it's, it, it knows what it's doing. But because of that, it almost makes the lessons related to that planet even louder because of the fact that, that planet knows what it's doing. And it knows that it needs to kind of steer the ship, right? So if Mars is trying to teach you a very specific lesson, or Venus, or whatever it may be, and they are in their home base, and they're, they're, they know the controls, they know what buttons they need to push to make things happen, they're going to do that, and they're going to push that lesson along further a lot faster, right? And so that's something that I think it just needs to be addressed when it comes to Mars in domicile, any planet in domicile, is because it almost makes it where that specific lesson becomes, like, there's no other place for it to go, right? Versus, like, if Mars was in, like, a mercurial sign, there'd be kind of, like, a mercurial sort of lesson interwoven into this, but when Mars is in a Mars world sign, it just, there's just Mars lessons involved with Mars, right? There's just, Mar like, more Mars lessons, right? It's kind of the way that I tend to look at it, but a lot of people look at domicile placements and, like, oh, it's just, it's good. You don't gotta worry about it. You don't gotta look at it, right? You gotta do the work, when in actuality, especially with Mars Scorpio, you need to do the work. There's a lot of work you need to do because Mars Scorpio, yes, there is this immense power, this immense strength, this immense willpower and, and determination and tenacity and grit and just perseverance. Trust me, I know I have it. It's there. But the thing about Mars Scorpio is it also has a very, very um, difficult relationship sometimes with what it's motivated for. Because the thing about Scorpio placements is it's all about truth. It's all about authenticity. It's all about the the purest expression of that thing. But to get to that purity, it has to go through all the toxicity, all the impurities, and kind of really, really um, filter all that out. And when it comes to Mars in Scorpio, it's so strong and it wants to do stuff so powerfully. And it almost doesn't know what to do with that power, right? And, and, and this is something that, that is very Scorpionic in nature is the whole phrase of what comes with great power comes great responsibility. But I think with Mars, Scorpio in specific, um, they have this kind of drive that they're like, I want to do everything. I want to be as efficient as possible. I want to be as powerful as possible. And they typically are when they know what they're going for, because this is also a fixed Mars placement. So the difference between a Mars and Scorpio and Mars and Aries, the two Mars rulers, is Mars is um, cardinal um, in the sign of Aries and fixed in the sign of Scorpio, meaning that Mars in a cardinal sign can just start things, start things, start things, start things, do things, and it, know, and it goes after goals, right? It kind of picks something up and then masters it and moves on, or whatever it may be. It knows how to kind of initiate and start things, right? Mars in a fixed sign, however, a fixed water sign, no less, um, is very stubborn with what it does. It's like, do I want to put the emotional energy into this? Because when I put emotional energy into something, I make sure it, it's the fullest effect. It's the fullest, um, you know, 
the depth of me that I'm putting into this, right? So that's the thing with Mars Scorpio. It's it's there's almost a um, delay in choice making, which is very odd because it's a Mars placement. But there's a delay in in making a choice and committing to something because of Mars Scorpio. When they commit, it's like I'm committed. There's nothing that's going to stop me from that from that path, right? And that's why with Mars Scorpio, it's really important to have really high goals. And yes, it's hard to kind of understand how to reach those goals sometimes, but if you have the goal in mind and you're like, that's what I want, and you keep that there, and you keep going through the mud and through the difficulty and through, and through all the stuff and be tenacious and not quit, which Mars Scorpio loves a fight like that. They love to just be on the verge of exhaustion and be on the verge of overworking and, and overextending themselves, and they just keep going and keep going and keep going. And they love that. They love that fight, which is also where there's an issue with Mars Scorpio where they need to understand their limits. They need to understand when to take a break. They need to understand when to relax, when to not work, when to not push themselves, right? Um, the thing about me, for example, so when I was much younger um, and I was, you know, in high school and I remember my um, senior year, I was doing it all. I was doing everything. Um, I was up at five o'clock in the morning. I had such a such a regimented schedule I was working out, I was, I was working out, I was taking like the highest honor classes, I was taking extracurriculars, and I was working an actual job as well, um, like a part-time job, and I was also studying and, and doing good grades and all these things. So I was doing so much, right? When we think about that Mars Scorpio, it's very similar to like that, like, I don't want to say straight A student, but that, that overachiever energy where it wants to just push its limits and push its limits and see what it can actually accomplish. But the thing about Mars Scorpio is it needs to do it inward. It needs to see the power that it has inside in the emotional center. Because the thing about Mars Scorpio, because it's a water sign, um, they need to, when they commit to something, it's because it's emotionally, like when they're emotionally invested in something, it's a big deal. So like I said, they need to be very serious about what they're emotionally investing into. And they're like, okay, I'm committed to this. This is what, we're going to make it work. We're going to, we're going to finish this out. We're going to, we're going to keep going. And that's the thing about Mars Scorpio sometimes. Other people might not have the same, um, uh, I don't say patience, but staying power or commitment to things where Mars Scorpio can almost be with something literally until it dies. Um, meaning, and I mean this more in the sense of like a job or a sinking ship in like a business or something. And they're like, I'm just going to keep, keep going, keep going, keep going. It's like, no, that's already kind of gone. You don't need to do that. Right. But the thing is, Mars Scorpio's energy is so strong that when they do put their energy towards things, they can really, really push stuff forward. And the thing is with Mars Scorpio as well, they can push forward um, the unearthing of the toxicity because they're so aware of it and they want to work within that. They want to work within the underrealm of people, underrealm of energies, and kind of be able to really, really help with a lot of things. And there's a lot of surgery that can kind of um, be connected to Mars and Scorpio, like kind of having these this surgical mindset, this surgical perspective on things where they're like, okay, I know what I need to do to get to the, the root of this problem. They're very very investigative. Um, the thing I, I've said to other people that have Mars and Scorpio is it's very much this like chess player game where they know what they're doing. They they very much are aware of what they're doing. But the thing is, is they get a lot of, um, they get a lot of clarity on what cards they want to play and what moves they want to make because they are aware of everyone else's cards. And it's not necessarily intentional that they get that awareness. Um, there are amounts of times, and I've said this to people um, that I know in my personal life, that the universe has consistently given me over and over again a lot of ammunition, quote unquote ammunition, not literal ammunition, but like figurative emotional ammunition which is very much like once again a watery mars so i get a lot of emotional ammunition from people um regarding things that i could say or could do to harm another person or harm someone's reputation or harm a business or whatever it may be right and that's the thing with mars mars is is it's the warrior it wants to fight it's like i want to fight i want something give me something to fight for give me something to destroy give me something to like to like really really like 
work towards and really, really like sink my teeth into and just completely like devour it, right? That's what Mars really, really wants in Scorpio, right? And like I said, the amount of times I've been given ammunition, I've been given things, it's like, here, what you gonna do with this? And that's the thing about Mars Scorpio, you know, with all Scorpio placements, they get tested. They get very much tested. And Mars Scorpio at one point or another in their life will, will know what it means to mismanage their anger and mismanage their desires. Mars Scorpio is all about mastering the willpower, mastering the desires, mastering what you're fighting for, mastering your own energy. And that's the thing with Mars. Mars is what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. And when it's in the sign of Scorpio, it's trying to connect as deeply to your soul um, as possible um, and, and say, okay, what can we do in this lifetime in a way that is so deeply empowering, right? And that is really hard to wake up to every day sometimes because you want your life to be so deeply fulfilling and so deeply um, empowering, not just for yourself, but for others. And sometimes to get that way, you really have to be at the absolute bottom and be at the absolute lowest and really, really regain that willpower, regain that strength. Um, Mars really wants to fight for something. Um, and if it is fighting for anything, it needs to make sure that all of its emotions are invested into that thing. And that's the thing with me as a Mars Scorpio individual. The amount of um, things that I've invested in for other people and and their energies and their support um, that has deeply helped and empowered them um, and in turn helped and empowered me and, and, and helped, you know, so many different things. Um, that's where I think Mars really, really shines in Scorpio, um, where it really wants to empower others. And I think once it doesn't do things for a selfish reason, and it does things for a selfless reason, and it is giving things away, and it is, um, once again, empowering people, purifying people, um, energetically kind of doing surgery, right? Scorpio, Scorpio energy is very surgical. So help people through psychological turmoil or through any sort of really disempowering state. That's what Mars really wants to do in Scorpio. It's like, give me that deep, dark psychological trauma. Give me all the nasty, gritty stuff and let me work through it with you. Um, and it is, it's a powerful one for sure. And, um, you know, there's been, there's been times with me that I've wanted to take on very, very extreme, um, fights, right? And I'm, spe I'm speaking on, like, legal, um, not just, you know, like, uh, not just, uh, small sorts of things, but bigger corporations and things like that, um, and fighting for that, right? And having that willpower, having that drive, having that passion, advocating for something, advocating for a group, right? For a cause. If you put Mars Scorpio and you give them something really to fight for that they really feel like is their their thing, they're gonna they're gonna obliterate that. They're they're gonna just fight through that. They're gonna let no one get in their way. Something that that is a personal story of mine um, is with my Mars Scorpio, something that I've found is when I get, first of all, when I get angry, which doesn't happen that much, but when I do get angry, I get really efficient. I don't like getting angry. And that's the thing with Mars Scorpio. I don't think, I don't think they like getting angry. If they do, um, they need to get outlets for their anger. There's a, there's a, definitely a, there's a need to work out, get their energy out, like just have outlets for their anger because Mars in its own sign, once again, is kind of knowing how to hit those buttons quite literally to cause anger. Um, but the thing is, with with Mars and Scorpio, what I've seen is, like I said, once when I when I get mad, I get very very efficient, and I get very scary as well when I get very mad. Um, but in a way that it's not it's it's not harming others. It's just energetically, it's very prickly. Like I get very prickly, and I get very much like everyone get out of my way. Like I'm doing what I need to do. You're in my way. Move. Like I get very like fo like focused. Like the amount of focus that. Mars Scorpio has, once again, because it's a fixed Mars, is like, it's laser pointed, right? If we think about Mars and Aries versus Mars and Scorpio, Mars and Aries is very much, you know, the, and people have said this analogy across the internet, but it's very much like the machine gun, like the kind of like all over the place, but it's, it's efficient. It, it gets the job done. Um, and it's kind of the daytime warrior. It's the fighter that's kind of out there and, and just making themselves known versus Mars and Scorpio is more of the, the sniper, 
right? That's like, I have one goal, that's my goal, and I'm just going to hit it, right? So, like I said, when I when I get mad, I just, I plow through it. I, I push through it, and anyone that's in my way, they move. They move because they can tell. And the thing is, as well, um, and then maybe it's because they're, they're, they're fearful as well. Um, and that's like a whole other thing with Scorpio. It's like, it knows how to navigate those undercurrents and kind of clear the, clear the ways, if you will. Um, but something that I find also interesting that I do, particularly with Mars and Scorpio, um, is if I have a goal in mind and I need to get something done, um, I will essentially ask the people that I need. And if they can't get me that answer, as quickly as I need or whatever, or they're not, they're not as fast and as efficient as I need. And they're not as like, um, uh, they're not the, the right answer. I immediately know that. And I immediately know to go to the next person. Like, it's kind of like, okay, next, like you're not, you're not it next. And I can, I can tell by what goal I'm trying to go after. So like, if I have a goal that I need to, you know, get this sort of paperwork, you know, sort of passed or, or signed or whatever, right? Um, I'll go through different people and I can tell almost immediately upon interacting with those, that, that person, um, kind of whether or not they're going to be that person that's going to actually help me or not. And if they're not, if they give me any sort of pause, I will just be like, no, next, there'll be a person, I'll find one. And I just, I keep going. And that's the thing with Mars Scorpio. Like I said, it's, it's very tenacious. It's very brave. It's very, um, just really, really stubborn. Um, there's almost a bulldozing energy as well that I've been told that I have, um, that once I really want something, I just kind of increase the pressure a little bit. I used to be a lot worse with this, <laughs> where I would just like plow through and be like, I want this. And I would just push it, right? Um, versus other times I kind of put the pressure on a little bit. Um, and then other times I I don't really have to. Like I said, I, there's not there's not much that I really have to do to, as a Mars Scorpio individual to really um, get what I really want. I think it's more about um, making sure my energy is used efficiently. That's kind of the thing, like I said, with Mars Scorpio is about using your energy really efficiently, using it in an empowered way, not feeling defeated from it. It's a lot about mastering your own um, your own energy, what you do with your day, your anger, like getting it out, like understanding how to use your use your energy. Um, understand how to follow your desires, right? Mars Scorpio is is such a um, desire-filled placement. It desires the deepest, richest, purest stuff, but it also desires pretty dark stuff as well, and it, and it can get on the dark side, um, and it needs to kind of know where power comes from, and sometimes power comes from going through darkness, reclaiming your light, um, and keeping it going, right? And that's something that I think Mars Scorpio really, really thrives in, um, is consistently um, just persevering, right? People have told me, they're like, you're so brave, you're so, you're so um, powerful, you're so ambitious, you're so, right? And it's like, cool, great. But to me, I just look at it as that's what I need to do. And I don't look at it as something that um, I'm doing to be ambitious or to be, you know, uh, praised or anything and that's like I said Mars and Scorpio it's just like this is what I have to do like it, it just doesn't really think anything of it it's just like this is what I have to do to get to that goal right and so there's a lot of things that Mars Scorpio almost can create um almost impossible goals or close to impossible goals and um always want to hit those always want to always want to reach those and I think that's something I think is really different than Mars and Capricorn um, which is another, you know, dignified or exalted placement or like, you know, powerful placement for Mars. Because Mars Capricorn has a very strong, strong will, um, but Mars Scorpio, it almost pushes the limits of its own capacity um, in a way that Mars Capricorn may not, right? Mars Capricorn kind of knows its capacity, it stays within those limits, versus Mars Scorpio is like, oh no, my goal is the moon and, or my goal is the moon and I want to go past the moon. I want to go to Mars, right? Which is funny, right? So it's almost like they they want to test their own physical limits. So with Mars Scorpio, you could definitely see um, someone who is push, pushing the bounds of their own actual physical energy. So they're exhausting themselves every day. They're doing extreme sports. These are doing adrenaline junkies. These are people that are going and, and doing extreme exhaustive 
efforts um, to purify or to find the answer or to really, really do something very, very deep and intense and valuable. And so um, Mars Scorpio has a lot of psychological things within that. There's a lot of desires to just go really, really deep and just to probe and to be able to do the most powerful thing, right? And that's the thing with Scorpio. It's about power. There's a lot of power in Scorpio. Um, and it's a lot about, once again, how you use that power. And once, like, like I said earlier, with the ammunition that I have consistently gotten throughout my life um, in so many different ways, and I'm using ammunition in like a metaphorical sense, like in the sense of, like I said, like rumors or facts or receipts or, um, you know, different things that I've gotten that I'm like, okay, I don't need to do anything with this. But it would be, there's there's a desire in Mars to be like, yes, do it. Do the toxic thing. Do the, And that's the thing with, like, with, like with Scorpio. Once again, it can be very toxic because Scorpio literally rules toxicity and that purification process. And with Scorpio Mars, you need to understand that you can do one or the other. You can be toxic and you can be purified. And it's hard to walk that road and know that there's a dark side that you can go to and, and know that there's a pure side that you, that you can go to and, and be pulled in both directions a lot of the time, right? And that's something, like I said, the amount of things that I know that I've been given that I have, and this is true for, I think, every single, like, Mars, or not Mars placement, but Scorpio placement in specific, where they have so much knowledge or so much power or so much ability to do things or to say things or to see things or to feel things or to, you know, get things, right? That it's what do they do with that? And the thing is, typically with Scorpio placements, they've experienced unethical, disempowering things related to that planet. So Mars and Scorpio typically will experience, um, like I said, mismanagement of their own anger or um, people that are very physically actually um, harming them. And there's like a sense of like needing to physically, um, you know, kind of um, get stronger and fight and, and be so, so tenacious and so willpower. And that's where, once again, Mars Scorpio can get very very um, emotionally intelligent and very psychologically intelligent. So there's almost this psychological battle that Mars Scorpio has that people don't understand um, where Mars wants to do things. And there's kind of this like devil angel thing all, at all times with Mars Scorpio where it wants to um, do the toxic thing but needs to know that it's not going to or know that it that, it, that only doing that is going to add more toxicity, add more drama, add more things. And I think, once again... <clears throat> Mars Scorpio, like the the amount of the amount of things that I can do, right? And they're quite destructive and they're quite proving of one's power. Like that's the thing with Mars Scorpio. I think it's it's important to know that you don't need to prove your power. Sometimes doing nothing while having all of this ammunition or all of this um, you know, sort of power and doing quote unquote nothing with it or not acting on it in an impulsive way is a really um, empowering thing to, you know, even just thinking about going into it, like at a more simple level, um, like going into like a store and not buying anything, right? Stopping that impulse. Impulse control is a very big thing for Mars Scorpio, um, where it's about understanding how to work with one's impulses, understand how to transmute and transform one's impulses into something that is empowering and, and impactful for their life because almost guaranteed that um, if you have Mars and Scorpio, you have experienced the impact of both your own, like, efforts and your own lack of efforts and saying, you know, like, I'm not going to do anything. And the people are like, well, why are you not doing anything? Like, this is really important to you, blah, blah, blah. And you, you take your energy away from something as a Scorpio Mars, and that thing just kind of goes down, right? And in the inverse, if you put your energy towards something, it's very powerful, right? The amount of people that I, like once again, that I have helped that have done complete, you know, like sort of 180s in a lot of, in a lot of ways, um, just because of me needing to be that Martian kind of motivator, right? Which is, once again, Mars rules motivation, it rules willpower, it rules that. And Mars Scorpio loves to sit with other people and help them through and empower them and, and get them to fight for themselves and get them to feel the power within themselves and kind of want to do that. That's something that I have always done within my life. 
Um, and Mars Scorpio also has, once again, like it's, it's the biggest thing that I could really say about this is be aware of what you're using your energy for, what you're using your time for, um, what you're using your resources for, what you're going after, and if it is worth it. And typically Mars Scorpio knows what's worth it in the moment, but there's always an added layer to it. There's always another layer to like, well, is is this what I really want to do? Is there more? Can I do more? Can I be more? Can I fight for more? Can I can I push myself more, right? That's something that Mars Scorpio has, and it's about the impulse control and also just ensuring that you're being as um, conscious of what you're doing as possible um, and being aware of that. So, like I said, Mars Scorpio is a very um, intense placement. Um, it's something that I've lived with my entire life, obviously, and it has been a saving grace in a lot of ways. Um, it's also been um, a little bit difficult in its own ways as well, um, but it has it has been overly um, supportive um, in my goals over time, and that's something that just Mars does when Mars is running a ship, right? When Mars is running his own ship, he knows what he needs to do to get those things done. And sometimes, once again, with Scorpio placements, is it's this disempowerment empowerment. So for me, there'll be times when I will be going through days, weeks, months, years without any motivation, like extreme motivation and extreme desire. And then suddenly it'll just kick and I'll just go and I'll get a lot of crap done in a very, very short amount of time. And it's like, once I know I need to do it, I'm like, this is what needs to be done. And also Mars Scorpio, too, can work really good in a crunch. Um, or in crisis. There's been times that I've worked in crisis um, and I sit there and I'm like, oh, okay, this is normal. Like, this is this is fine to me. Everyone else is in absolute chaos. And I'm like, okay, so what do we do, right? This is, this is the person that's in the middle of a, an absolute crisis, an absolute meltdown, um, and they're the calm one because they're like, okay, well, what needs to be done, right? They, they, they look at those things and they look at the intensity and they're like, okay, let's find the let's find the crux of the problem and let's nip it in the butt or let's address it or let's fix it or let's rebuild it or whatever needs to be done to fix that problem let's find it right that's why mars scorpio makes amazing managers leaders fighters motivators because they're like they, they they're able to look at whatever someone's bringing to them um or whatever the problem is and see what needs to be fixed because they're they're able to work really deeply they can get really involved with emotions as well because it's a water sign. So it's about um, knowing how to work within that kind of psyche and that kind of psychic field as well with other people and how they are um, navigating with the sensitivity to others because Mars Scorpio can, can accidentally burn or sting or hurt other people without meaning to um, and can kind of just create this kind of fire in people that might not necessarily be passion. It might be anger right? Um, it also, interesting with Mars and Scorpio, there is this, like, natural kind of sex appeal as well, um, and just kind of, like, power that happens when you have this placement, where people kind of perceive um, sex appeal, they perceive power, they perceive that you can do something. Um, once again, I said this in the Sun Scorpio video as well, because this is my other placement that I have in Scorpio, but I have, and I think it's also relative to Mars and Scorpio as well, but there is a sense of being, um, I don't necessarily want to say undervalued, but um, misunderstood of what you can do. People think all the time that, not all the time, not as much now, but when I was younger, people used to think that I couldn't do anything, quote unquote, couldn't do anything. Um, and I mean this more in the sense of like, I'm not a threat, Right. I don't come across as a threat. And that's the thing with Mars Scorpio. With the scorpion, it sits there. It doesn't do anything until it's threatened, right? It kind of sits there. It kind of just protects its space. And if you encroach on its space, and if you upset it and you tempt it or you, um, you know, kind of poke at it or irritate it, it will strike. And it will strike very efficiently, right? That's what a scorpion does. Right, it's like, oh no, you're not gonna, you're not gonna hurt me. You're not gonna get that close, right? And it just kind of does what it needs to do, right? And that's something with me. I think it's interesting because Scorpio likes to say hidden. It likes to say, oh yeah, just keep thinking that, keep thinking that I don't know what I'm doing, keep thinking that I'm not powerful, right? And I just sit there and I'm like, okay. And then when people realize, 
that I'm, you know, um, capable of what I'm capable of, or I'm, you know, um, have this information, these things, I don't have to do anything. I, I don't. I don't have to. And that's the thing. It's about how that power is wielded, how all those things is, are kind of done. And I think power is such a universal thing um, and force is such a universal thing. And I think there's so much that we have to learn about how to use our power, how to use what is given to us. And I think so many people think about power differently. Some people view power only in the sense of, um, you know, relationships. So people, be, so people view power only in the sense of intellect or information. So people view power only in the sense of money. So people view power only in the sense of sex. Um, so people view power only in the sense of, you know, technology or or um, family, right? There's there's so many different ways that power can be kind of in, interwoven into anything that we're doing. And I think, um, or power in politics, right? There's so much power in so many different places where um, what is the use of, like, power is so important, but what are you using it for? And that's the thing I think Mars Scorpio needs to understand is what are you using your power for? Is it to empower others? Is it to... Um, develop yourself, develop others, develop your body, develop your goals, go after your goals? Or is it to disempower others, to harm others, to um, keep yourself stagnant? Um, you know, any of those things, right? Is it to steal? Is it to fight, right? That's the thing. Mars Scorpio has such a range of things that it can do that it needs to make sure that its ethics are in place and it is its morals are in place and its moral compass and it's kind of, it's kind of center is really in place. And once again, it typically gets there. It gets to that moral center and that moral kind of heart of things typically after it sees how much it can actually destroy and harm and, and hurt, right? And that's kind of the hardest part about Scorpio placements is the rebuilding after that, the Phoenix moment, if you will, right? Of rebuilding after all of what you had, um, potentially destroyed or or harmed or hurt um and really really needing to control that or scorpio is so powerful and it can it can very easily teeter into other areas and it is something that um has such a um power to it and i think like i said with with this placement it's so important to keep your kind of willpower in check, um, as well as making sure that you are, once again, utilizing your energy as healthily as possible, having outlets, right? Being, um, being proud of what you're accomplishing, going after your goals, being consistent, working out a lot, you know, all those things, like having a sense of routine is really important for Mars and Scorpio. Um, you don't need to fight for, for everything, um, not everything is a life or death battle. Um, it can feel that way for sure with a Scorpio Mars, um, but not everything is. Um, and, you know, I think when it comes to Mars Scorpio, they are also, because they're a fixed Mars placement, they're very, very patient. And so these are the big grudge holders. These are the ones that are like, okay, I'm going to win that fight. If it takes me five years, I'll win the fight, Right. I'm not going to do the Mars Aries thing and just kind of get it done and be, you know, whatever that may be. Um, and just kind of go after it that way. Um, not saying that's not efficient at that time to get it done, but Mars and Scorpio is going to win in the long term because it's going to test its resolve. It's going to test its impulses to wait to pull that trigger, to wait to send that text, to pull up that receipt, to file that motion, right? That's something you'll see with Mars and Scorpio is they, they're very strategic with their timing because they're waiting for once again, like I said earlier, the other party or whomever other parties are being involved, whoever other, other information they're needing to get from other people um, is revealed to them. Then they know what they're working with, what they're doing, what they're kind of um, needing to do. Because then you can see what their move is and then you know, kind of based off of everything else, what else you need to do, right? So they're always kind of investigating, always get more information, they're always getting more context of what they can do. And like I said, I think that's why Mars and Scorpio really likes to play the long game because it allows them to keep collecting more information, keep it, collecting more ammunition, collecting more kind of um, things to use 
in their goals and really kind of churning on them, sitting on them and making sure and keeping themselves in check to not be that toxic Scorpio Mars because that is a struggle. And I have had that happen to me quite a few times and I have waited and I have waited and I have waited and I have waited out the, the impulse. I've waited out the desire to harm. I've waited out the desire to send that text, send that receipt, right? Do those things. I've waited because I've known in that moment that doing that impulsive thing, doing that um, fiery, you know, reckless thing that Mars loves to do, and Mars and Scorpio, of course, loves to do, um, it's better to wait on it, sit on it, let the water settle, right? Because if it's boiling water, you're going to do stuff really, really rapidly, right? If you think about literally boiling water, it takes a long time for that sometimes to cool down. So wait for that process and then reassess. I think that's the biggest gift I would give to someone with Mars and Scorpio is when you are fired up, when you are passionate, wait on that. Just wait. Talk it out because most of the time, if you really are self-aware as a Mars Scorpio needs to be of what they're doing and why they want to do things, you'll understand in that moment that you shouldn't do that thing and you shouldn't harm that person. You shouldn't, you know, send that text, do whatever, whatever that is, whatever, whatever that, that, that negative impulsive thing is, you shouldn't do that. And you know, you shouldn't do that. Um, but in that moment, you can't see that it's like seeing red, right? Literally, like when you're seeing red, you, like you can't, you don't want to calm down. And that's the thing Mars Scorpio needs to do that. They need to just calm down and either talk it out or remind themselves that they're not going to do that. Right. And that's that's really hard. Um, and so Mars Scorpio, it, it's it's a harder placement, um, even though people think it's so good because it's a Scorpio placement. Right. It's and it's Mars. Right. It's it's difficult. It really, really is. And I think it's something that um, if you have Mars Scorpio, um, I would love to hear your story. And I'm going to cut it here in a second just because I've been talking about Mars Scorpio for so long. Um, and this is I also have to talk about Mars 8th house. So we'll get to that in a second. Um, but there's so much in this particular placement that I love, um, obviously. And I have, like I said, I have so much story to tell with this and I'm really appreciative of anyone that, that feels empowered by this. And I think if you have Mars and Scorpio, just use your power wisely, use your, your willpower wisely. Don't let it destroy you. Don't let it overcome you. Don't let it control you. Your desires are, are coming from a deeper part of you. And if you understand where the desires are coming from and you are sitting with them and you're sitting with them long enough, you'll see the the deeper deeper reason as to why you want that thing and that is another key into unveiling more and more and more of who you are as if you sit with what you want and why do you want it so that's all i have to say about mars and scorpio if you have your mars and scorpio i'd love to hear your story if you guys like this video, please like, comment, share, subscribe, all those things. Those things help me. I love doing this. This is what I do um, pretty much full time. Um, and I love every minute of it. I love being able to help um, with my particular um, astrological knowledge. And I just appreciate this. I appreciate you being here. And I'm going to move on to the next part. We're talking about specifically Mars in the eighth house. All right. So we have Mars in the eighth house. So this placement has um, a little bit more of a struggle than the Mars in Scorpio. And I say more of a struggle, meaning that Mars in Scorpio has a lot it has to deal with, a lot it has to understand, and has to fight through the depth and the darkness and, and fight with itself a lot of the time, right? Mars in the eighth doesn't necessarily have that same problem. It does to some degree, but Mars in the eighth also has a lot of issues when it comes to other people that are different than Mars in Scorpio. Because Mars in Scorpio in its own sign, is going to typically um, conquer those things, right? It's going to just, for the most part, unless it is doing things that it shouldn't be doing or doing things unethically, for the most part, Mars Scorpio will overcome um, those those issues. And that's the thing with, with Mars in the 8th, it will do that as well. Um, depending upon the Mars placement, it can struggle in different ways and there are different themes of to what it's going to try to overcome from other people. Um, but Mars really wants to, um, understand how to trust people with this placement. It wants to, um, fight for something very deep with someone, um, and very, very intimate 
and merge with someone and connect with someone and connect with their desires, connect with what they have, their resources, their values, their things, and push and push and push and push. Um, and that's the thing, Mars, Mars in the 8th, it really needs to know the limits of where that line is in another person and how much another person can handle, how much they can get from another person, how much they should push towards another person or another person's goals or push towards another person's um, sort of intimate details. So that's the thing, like Mars, and this is true for Mars and Scorpio too, because I've definitely done that where I've pushed a little bit too far too fast. So that is something that's also true, but Mars in the 8th, there's a lot of different ways this can play out because the 8th house can be in so many different signs and Mars in turn can be in so many different signs in that house. And it's going to kind of aggravate that, um, that, that intimate partnership and that intimate kind of connection. It's going to kind of make it a little bit more feisty, fiery, combative. Um, and so that connection, that intimate connection is going to have a lot more of a, um, uh, a, battle literally just a battle i mean it's different than it is in mars and libra because mars and libra has and mars in the seventh has more of a um it, it's needing to learn how to see that other person and see what they're working with and those sort of things the eighth house as it relates to the seventh house is obviously the one after it but because of that it's a continuation so this isn't just getting to know a person on like a one-to-one -one, what do you have what do i have what are your goals what do you want to do this is like the step further from that this is let's talk about your trauma let's talk about your issues let's talk about how we can make money together let's talk about you know how you can help me how i can help you like let's talk about the nitty-gritty stuff let's have the really intimate dark deep traumatic intense baggage related issues and conversations let's talk about those right that's what mars in the eighth house wants it's like let's push towards that right and so the eighth house is a little bit different because it's pushing towards things that none of us really want to look at. None of us really want to have those really vulnerable, intense, um, soul-bearing conversations. We don't want to have those. Um, but Mars in the 8th, or any 8th eighth, eighth house planet for that matter, is going to kind of force that. It's going to kind of force, um, especially Mars, because Mars is like a force. It's going to kind of force that... Um, those different conversations and this can come from someone else this can come from someone else trying to push you further and further and further to be more forthcoming about the darker parts of you and your trauma and your depth and your depth and your and your psychology and all of those things and all your darkness and taboos and shadows right so it can go kind of both ways with mars here but typically mars is what drives you so mars in the eighth you're driven by connecting very deeply to people very intimately very um in a very authentic and very um, nothing held back sort of way, right? And so just know that that's something that Mars will do in the eighth uh, because it's going to, once again, push you deeper into connection with someone in a way that is not comfortable for either of you, um, if I'm being honest, but it's what's necessary to really, really trust somebody and really trust yourself. And this is another thing, Mars in the 8th is about trusting yourself to go further into something with someone. To trust, okay, can I go this far with them? Okay, can I go this far with them? Okay, let's push a little bit further, right? And this is where we talk about the, you can only meet someone as deep as you met yourself. And this is something that I think I'm gonna be saying quite a lot throughout these Scorpio videos because it feels so relevant to the 8th house in Scorpio because that's a lot of what we tend to see here is there's there's kind of a, a psychological barrier that the 8th house and Scorpio are connected to. And for this particular video with Mars, it's about pushing through that and knowing how far you can go or how to go towards that, how, how to comfortably go towards that, how to go that collaboratively, you know, how to trust somebody, how to work with someone else's energy, resources, finances, those sorts of things. So just know that's part of it too. Um, now Mars and different signs in the 8th house are going to have a lot of different ways it's going to play out. Okay, so Mars in a Martian sign obviously is going to be very strong in um, in this particular way. I already talked about Mars Scorpio, um, and I'm not really going to go into a lot of detail on these, or I'm not going to try to, just because I have made most of these videos prior to Scorpio. Um, so you're welcome to check those videos out in the playlist down below as well. And for more context, I don't want to go deeply into them because I would be talking about these for quite a long time if I were to. Um, but Mars in a Martian world sign the eighth house, um, there is going to be this kind of fighting, 
once again, fighting for deeper connection with whomever you're talking to, fighting for kind of this, um, this really, really deep, intimate bond with somebody. And Mars in Aries, more specifically, in the eighth house, is going to have a lot more of a, I'm doing this for me, I need to do this, I need to connect to you for for, for this reason. So there might be some more self-focused reasons with Mars and Aries, um, and there can be a little bit more of an impulse control with this as well, um, where they need to learn how deeply they can go into something with someone, how deeply they can push something. So these are the ones that, once again, have an impulse control thing, because Mars in Martian sign is going to kind of need to learn that, um, because Mars is so strong here. Um, so that's part of it. Now, Mars in um, a Venus world sign, so Mars in Taurus or Libra here, this is an interesting one because this is where Mars doesn't do quite well, right? Mars does not like to be um, in Taurus or Libra um, in, in general. I've done both these videos. They're both, you know, Mars and a Venus road sign. They're trying to have harmony, trying to have peace, trying to have solidarity and connection and, and just everything be pretty and neutral and, and, and safe, right? And Mars is never like that. Conflict is never going to be pretty and, and smooth. It's just not. It's not. It never is. And that's the thing with Mars and a Venus world sign. That's why they struggle a little bit is because they have that that difficulty that they have to work with. Um, but Mars in the eighth house in this Venus world sign, this is where you'll see a lot more financial aspects of this um, because you'll have a Venus world sign in the eighth house. So there is this tendency to have a, um, a kind of like... Um, I want to get something out of this sort of thing. Mars and Aries can do that too, but Mars and Aries knows what it's getting out of it. It knows what it wants to get out of it. Mars and a Venus world sign, it also kind of knows that, but it needs to do it very smoothly. And that's the thing. Mars and a Venus and Libra and a Libra and a, and a Venus, bleh, and Taurus and Libra and a Venus world sign, they're going to know how to do that, but it's only to get more of what they want and more of what the other person wants. So this is another thing. This would be great for financial managers. Like Mars and Venus ruled signs in the eighth house. Great for that. I think that would be so... And same with Venus and Venus in a Martian ruled sign in those eighth houses would still be great because it's connecting. It's that natural connection between, um, between this um, kind of feminine, masculine kind of polarity of kind of what can I get from you? What can you give to me? that sort of thing. How deep can we go? How deep are you willing to go? That sort of stuff. So that's where I like this one a lot. Um, the financial stuff is way more on the sense of Mars and Taurus. Mars and Libra has more of a legality to it, like more of like a lawyer energy to it for sure here, or kind of like a refinancing debt sort of energy. There's like a lot of debt stuff here as well. Um, Mars and a Mercury world sign. So we have Mars in Gemini and Virgo. This is going to be obviously the, the, the talker, the one that's helping people organize stuff. These are the ones that write loans, write grants. Grant writing would be a really great thing for this one. Um, someone that helps write contracts to help um, make money for a lot of people, who helps manage finances for a lot of different people. That could be something that you'll see with Mars. Um, it's also true if like Mars is in connection with Saturn as well with this aspect, where there's almost a neat wanting to work with people's money and resources and and kind of um, help find the right words to ensure that every, all those boundaries are really well placed. This can be a great talk therapist as well, a great surgeon um, with Mars and Virgo and Gemini. They're both kind of surgical. There also can be, um, specifically plastic surgeons can be really good with this, um, especially if it's Mars and Gemini more specifically. Um, Mars and Aries can also have this too. Um, the eighth house does rule surgery. Um, so it can be creating those really deep transformation through Martian means. So this can be, obviously, surgery is one of those. Um, motivation is one of those. Fitness is another one of those. So you could see a lot of fitness kind of influencers with, like, Mars and a Venus road sign in the 8th house. And people that are kind of working with that and kind of coaching people in that regard. You can see a lot of coaches with Mars, pretty prominent. Um, but yeah, so Mars and Gemini, Mars in, in Virgo, they're, once again, these are the talkers. These are, these are the speakers. These are the writers. Um, and it's about writing about other people's stuff, other people's value, money, those sorts of things. So um, there could be definitely some really intense arguments about wills. These could be will writers. This could be people that, I don't know if that's even a job, but like, I'm sure it is, but like legally writing wills and working on that process and writing like um, 
just writing through legal things and legal documents and stuff like that is really interesting. You could see this also with Mars in the ninth a little bit, um, but I see it more with Mars in the eighth is actually like alimony, taxes, like accountant would be a really, actually accountant would be really good for like Mars Gemini and Mars Virgo. Um, very good for that one, more so than the Mars Venus is more of like a financial manager, kind of that it can be accountant, but it's more of like, yeah, not really the one like writing all the things out, all those things. That's more of like a Mars Mercury kind of conversation. So Mars and Cancer here, um, and Mars and Leo. So Mars and Cancer, um, in the eighth, uh, this is, this is just going to be family drama, uh, all over the place, family drama, working with family, doing all that stuff. Um, real estate investing would be a really, really, really rich thing for this person. Um, kind of getting property from their family or working with their family's property, work with their family's inheritances. Um, yeah, there's a lot of like even the home renovations or um, like uh, restaurant work or restaurant like um, renovations as well or architectural things could happen with this. Um, there's something about like art architectural financing. I don't know if that's even a thing. I'm sure it is. Um, like I said, Mars and Mars in the eighth can get a lot of loans. They can get a lot of loans, get a lot of support from other people if they're willing to fight for it, right? Um, and yeah, so that's just something that we'll see with Mars and Mars and Cancer. It's fighting for the family's um, financial security, right? So you'll see someone that's really fighting for their family with this one for sure, um, and maybe have a lot of debt from their family as well. Mars and Leo, similarly, except this is um, more of a. Um, I'm doing, this is where, once again, with similar to Mars and Aries, where you'll have kind of a self-centered desire towards getting things from someone else. Um, there's a creative aspect to this one I really like. There's, um, there's a joyous aspect to this one. This is a real, this is honestly, I like this one for coaching, but it's hard because Mars Leo in the eighth, it, Mars Leo can be good coaches, but um, when it comes to, like, I'm thinking specifically in, like, regards to, like, psychological and therapeutic things, they can. But it's all, this would be great, like, a music therapist or, like, someone who uses creative ways to help people be empowered. A hypnotherapist would be great as well. Um, it's also something you could see with Mars and Virgo, but that's more like Mars Scorpio, if anything. But Mars Leo could do that, too, where they're almost like a performative um, sort of um, healer, psychic hypnotherapist that's me I could see that more with I think Mars Leo would be more hypnotherapist than anything or like an artist's coach or an artist's like kind of empowerment kind of talent coach could be a thing too with Mars and Leo Leo in the eighth kind of has that too um not just Mars and Leo but just Leo in the eighth has like a talent coach energy talent agent um kind of finding those people scouting people right um that can help you look good right um as a talent coach talent talent agent so yeah, it's an interesting one there, yeah. Um, Mars and a Jupiter World Sign. So these are the um, two Mars placements um, out of the four Mars placements, really, that I haven't done. So I haven't done any Mars, Jupiter, or Mars, Saturn yet. So those will be coming, obviously. Those are the next um, four, actually, um, to be done. So Mars and Sag and Mars and Pisces in the eighth. <laughs> Mars and Pisces in the eighth. I'm going to start with that one. There's, there's, some, <laughs> there's a lot of getting lost in stuff here. There's a lot of... Um, this is where you'll see a lot more, like I said, similar to Mars in um, Cancer in the 8th. I guess it's just a Mars water thing in the 8th house, too. Is like There's almost this sense of um, dealing with a lot of people's um, like addictions or issues or trauma. It's going to be great for healers, great for mediums, great for psychics. Um, but it's a lot about dealing with a lot of what was given to you. Um, so this is where you'll see people that, like I said, have family issues they had to deal with or just deep, deep things that they had to have dealt with that they didn't know why and that makes them more spiritually evolved, spiritually powerful. Mars in the water house is going to do that, I think. Um, but Mars in a water sign, in a water house, um, it's just water, water. It's just a lot of water, right? It's just like overwhelming feelings, overwhelming things, drowning, drowning in debt, drowning in you know, responsibility with others, drowning in financial kind of obligations. There's there's something here with Mars Pisces in the eighth. There's something here with international trade as well. Um, from a business standpoint, working with international trade could be a thing um, as well as um, something about specifically liquid assets. Um, 
and liquefying of people's assets. So like I said, debt reconsolidation can be a really big thing for Mars and Pisces in the eighth house. Um, Pisces in the eighth house, I think it just has a really interesting way of um, dissolving debt um, through philanthropy. And, and there could be like a philanthropic um, artistic thing, similar to Mars and Leo, where there's like a, I'm doing this to look good, but Mars Pisces could like, weirdly enough, like stumble upon or get something inherited to them that is worth millions of dollars, right? They could have like so much given to them um, that they didn't even know, or they find it in like a garage sale, right? That's something you could see here and it, and it completely um, diminishes their entire financial thing or very much, it's just always kind of a mess or their, their involvement, like people's money is very much always a mess. Um, but it can also be very, very spiritual when they lean into that side. And I'll get to that with Mars and Pisces. I'm not going to go too long into that because I'll get to Mars and Pisces eventually. But other Mars sign, Mars and Mars and Sag. Um, this is this is where you'll see um, the investment banker, the um, the one who might be doing stocks as well. It's also something that I can see with um, with Mars and Leo, where these are honestly the Mars Leo um, <laughs> in the eighth feels very much, not to go back to that, but the Mars Leo in the 8th feels very much like a, um, those financial influencers, um, yeah, oh yeah, Leo in the 8th has that as well, and so does Sag in the 8th, they kind of have that, like, kind of, not necessarily scammy, because I'm not saying that that's true for everyone that's a financial advisor on, or advisor, quote-unquote, on, um, social media, but, um, someone who just really likes to, um, share their financial knowledge. That's something you'll see with Mars in, in a Jupiter ruled sign. Um, I think Mars and Sag has a lot more of a grip on it, a more solid grip on it than Mars does in Pisces for obvious reasons. Um, so there can be a lot of spending people's money with this. Mars in a fire sign in an eighth in the eighth house, right? A fire sign in the eighth is just like really uh spend thrifty out of other people's money. So they get a lot of loans, they get a lot of loans with this one. Um same with Mars Pisces. But Mars Pisces needs to figure out what they're doing it for. Mars Sag also needs to figure that out. But um, there's something that there's also like once again this th this could be a lawyer one as well. Mars Sag in the eighth could be lawyer energy or divorce attorney um, as well. Or um, ooh immigration is also Mars Jupiter in the eighth. There's an immigration aspect there. Um, yeah, there's a fighting for fighting for those things. Now Mars and Saturn, so Mars in Capricorn and Aquarius. Mars and Aquarius, this is um this is a big one on grant writing, philanthropy. This is like kind of a not really I want to say a catch all because that's not really true, but um this is a five hundred one c three. This is the the nonprofit. This is the one that gets funding for nonprofit. This is the one that um gets a lot of community support, community building, community like financing, peer to peer lending. These are the ones that that get um crowdfunded. These are these are the GoFundMe's, really, honestly. Mars Mars and Aquarius and the eighth is just GoFundMe energy, like almost to a T. Um but Mars here does have a little bit of a um feistiness to it, um, where it it needs to understand what its goals are. And I think Mars and Aquarius, and I'm excited to get to that eventually because Mars and Aquarius have such a unique energy to it. Um but there's a uh a need to make sure that you're doing things for the right audience, right? With Mars and Aquarius. Aquarius is all about the audience in the eighth house. There's a deep involvement with the audience. So once again, figuring out who you trust, why you trust those people, who you're sharing what with. Um, Cause the collective as a Mars Aquarius individual can be a little divisive on what you're doing and allowing your desires to be driven by a community can be sometimes misleading to you and untrue to you um, and can harm you in a financial sense in that regard. Um, Mars and Capricorn, this is a great Mars placement in the, in the eighth house here. Um, they really want to have a um, business. This is business people. This is really investors, bankers, angel investors, long-term investors, just investment. That's just really what it is in, in the eighth house there with Saturn. Aquarius kind of this too, but a little bit different um, for obvious reasons. But yeah, there's, there's a lot of energy here with Mars and Capricorn, exalted Mars in the eighth. This is like getting a lot of big loans for people. This is the, I just got a small loan of a million dollars type energy, right? Um, or I just, I wanted this, I asked for this and I got it, right? Um, versus like Mars in Pisces can, in the eighth, uh, in the eighth house can be given like 
a credit card they don't know what to do with, right? And they're like, here's $20,000. And you're like, what? Versus Mars and Capricorn kind of steadily increases that and works towards those goals as they see fit. This is great for financial um, advisors. If you know some of the Mars Capricorn in the 8th house, ask them for financial advice. They will probably help you in a very, very, very powerful way. Um, other thing I wanted to add before I end this portion here, obviously look to your Mars placement and the ruler of that Mars. So if Mars is in a Mercury world sign, look to your Mercury. Mars is in a Saturnian world sign, look to Saturn. Jupiter, look to Jupiter. All those things are going to give you more context about how you're going after these deeper, intimate, um, darker financial goals. Um, so just be aware of that um, as you kind of move forward in this astrological journey and kind of connecting these dots. And obviously, if you're interested in anything with me, all my stuff's down below. Um, and I really hope this video helps some people because this has been a continuous um, journey for me doing these videos. And I'm so grateful to be able to do these. There, There's so many different things that I have to say. And I am so excited to be working through this series um, with all of you. And I'm excited for this series to just be on my channel indefinitely. People can learn about it um, as we go through it. So um, so thank you for being here. I hope this video helped anyone, everyone that came across it. I know it's a long video, um, but I just appreciate you being here listening to me. Um, and if this helps anyone, I just hope it was you. So thank you so much. And I will see you guys in the next video in Scorpio season. And obviously, of course, if you guys are interested in anything with me, and also, of course, this playlist that's down below with all these videos, check that out below too. Um, and I have everything prior to Scorpio and Libra, and then all the rest of them are going to be coming out in the subsequent seasons. So thank you so much. And I'll see you guys in the next video where we talk about um, Mercury and Scorpio. So see you in the next one.